What's poppin' everybody? This is the Cartoon Kid, Ray Rollins, and today we're back at it again talking about some It's Pony, the good old new Nickelodeon show that's hot and poppin' right now on the network that me and Alex kind of took a good liking to. For So today's episode, we'll be talking about the episode called Horus. Now, before we get into breaking the episode down, we got to get the whole episode breakdown from Alex Payne. So, Alex, tell us what's happening in this in this episode. Na, 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 na. Basically, I mean, this episode follows a pretty simple plot, really. Annie is going to get detention because she brought Pony to school again, even though the principal tells her she can't bring him to school. And to get out of going to detention, she says that she'll take care of the principal's dying plan. And when she carries it home, Pony gets a bit attached to it, and eventually he doesn't want to give it back. So basically the episode follows him taking care of the plan and her trying to get it back from him. All and, right. And my first, my first thought is, though, uh, I, 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 like, I kind of like this episode. It's like, I feel like it's an okay episode, you know? A unique premise, I'll say. I mean, I guess you could probably argue it's... it's uh, Another look at the taking care of something and the person, you know, taking care of some random object and the person getting weirdly obsessed and treating it like it's a living thing. But I don't know. I kind of liked it. I thought it was interesting. Okay, okay. And you know what? See, in this case, to kind of counterreact what you said, I mean, you can say he's Pony's taking care of a plant, which isn't as weird as SpongeBob SquarePants taking care of a Krabby Patty. So, and obviously, I, I, I'm sure that's what you were referring that to. But, you know, I, I thought that was pretty awesome. It's a living thing. But my first impression, and I have to do it. I have to do it, man. Big ups, big shout outs to the creator of this series for putting a black principal in the goddamn principal seat, okay? People, <laughs> <laughs> I got to support the people, man. Like, you never think. And it, I got to say, this show is very diverse okay you, you you see all the kids around the school like there's three kids standing in the line you know talking about going to the big parade there's a white kid there's a black kid and there's a little uh i, I guess you could say latino but it's like a little brown kid um and it's pretty cool because the reason why i say that is and i'm not one of those people who are like oh cool they got a black principal you know i mean well no i am i i just said that but what i mean by that is I remember being young, right, and watching PBS Kids. Caillou um, is a good example. Nothing but, like, you know, white characters. You know, you don't. it's a very rare thing that you saw a black character on Caillou. And I can't remember if there was one, but another one was Arthur. I want to say Francine Frensky was one of the black characters on Arthur. And I want to say there was another one. Clifford, nothing but white people, okay? Charlie was the only black kid on Clifford or Clifford's puppy days rather. And it's pretty cool like I said just to see that man, you know. It things look very diverse in its pony and maybe that's the whole change of the whole, you know, it's the SJW era, I guess if you want to even call it that. But that's something I don't want to shine too highly on or or you know, bring too much attention to, but I, it's something I want to point out and that's for my reasoning of even saying that. It's like, man, watching old PBS kid shows when I was real little Nothing but white characters. And then you see a show like this that has nothing but, you know, diversity in it, in my opinion, which is pretty dope. So that's my first thoughts. I guess we can slide on into moments. What are some of your favorite moments in this episode, Mr. Alex Payne? Well, I have to mention that moment when Pony is reading what sounds like a pretty erotic story to the plant. Oh, cool. oh yeah, yeah. The vampire one, man. He was reading Twilight. <laughs> Actually, that is kind of possible, I suppose. Maybe, <laughs> so my, who knows? Say, so my heart skipped a thousand beats as the undead one took me in his arms. It's like, oh, oh. God, where's this going? <laughs> Say, so the moon shot, be... the moon reflected off his porcelain skin. Oh my God! Listen, that should not be on a Nickelodeon show, but. Who cares, man? It didn't get too descriptive. I got to say, one thing that really stood out to me is um, seeing Annie's dad read a newspaper. So you see when they were, like, talking about, oh, the plan's dead, the plan's dead, and you just see her dad just basically not giving two dams. He's just over there just reading the newspaper. It made me think, man, 
I mean, I don't know what time of day or what time of year or whatever, a life era or whatever this takes place, but this ideally you would think take place in 2019, meaning that newspapers are relevant. Funny story, little quick, you know, thing right here. Me and my uncle Big G were in a restaurant and this dude picked up a freaking newspaper. I'm like, man, you read newspapers still? Like, man, I thought everything is done on your phone. But, you know, Annie's dad is an old timer, basically. Not middle aged. That's, ver- that, you know. that's very millennial of you, sir. It really is. And it just shocks me that people still read newspapers today. <laughs> newspaper? Just, you newspaper. Got again, you. Man, you, you old as hell read newspapers and shit. <laughs> Go back to the damn 80s. This is the 2019s, man. This is 2019, 2020. Shit. But that was one of the things that really stood out to me. I got to mention Annie, you know, she was so smooth with it, trying to cut the deal with the principal. She's like, yo, if I save your plant, man, um, I can see about getting out of detention, right? You know, I can't take care of your plant if I'm in detention. And it's just like, ah, Annie, you smooth motherfucker. And, you know, principal basically goes along with it, man, which was pretty dope. What about you? What other moments you got? I think that's about it because... I just enjoyed the episode overall, so the, I, I don't really have too many moments I want to mention in particular. Okay. Well, I guess we can slide right into reviews now. Let's let's see. What what do you think about the episode? Let me get your review that, on this episode. But I, I thought the episode was um, good. It was, it was decent, you know? Nothing too great, nothing too terrible. A nice, average, cool, very watchable a really watchable episode. Um, I think I'll I think I'll give it a nice solid six point five. Okay, I gotta say, like I, I mentioned briefly, is like the whole premise of seeing what Annie can get <laughs> can get past the principal. Like, man, yeah, if I take care of your plant, can you get me out of the tension? I thought that was a pretty cool, I guess you could say, kid character move. You know, like of course. It's just like, man, yeah, I'm in, in a little bit of trouble. Let me see if I could cut a deal with the principal. So it's pretty, it's pretty interesting to see that come into play. You can always argue that, man, uh, Nickelodeon, man, you guys are teaching kids some, uh, some bad things here, man. You shouldn't be teaching kids how to try to cut deals with principals and shit. But I think it was a pretty awesome razor. Seeing Pony run up in there countless times to freaking, I guess you could say, use the bathroom. <laughs> And the second time we yeah. had the freaking kids screaming, I, it was pretty kind of funny. Granted, that goes over in a moment. But I like the whole premise that Pony basically gets attached to the plant, like you said. And it's very different than the episode to where SpongeBob falls in love with a Krabby Patty. You know, you, it's obviously a living thing. So, which I guess you can say it's either weird or not weird or whatever. I think it's pretty, I guess, normal, perhaps. I would say normal. Well, at least he was you know, taking care of the plan. SpongeBob right. was in love with the plan. Right, right, right. And that's the thing I'm trying to say there. It's just like it's an actual living thing. He was taking care of it, caring for it, giving it nice high end dust mountain water, or whatever they call it, dust spring water. And I like the whole little part where Annie's mom's like, ah. He, he may be obsessed with it now, but give it maybe till tomorrow. He'll be on something like yo-yos. I got to say this, too. Since this episode is focused heavily on plants, I'm kind of disappointed that they didn't have, like, a little callback to the first episode where he had the whole plant phobia or whatever it was called. It's kind of, you know, I mean, yeah, I guess you could yeah. say he got over it, but they should still at least throw a little callback to it. You know, oh, man, it's crazy how you used to be so afraid of plants but you love them now or whatever or you or you love Horace this plant right here but long story short I gotta say the ending was pretty damn hilarious obviously it goes between <laughs> Annie and Pony it's just like man you either gotta decide Annie if you wanna go to the parade or do you want Pony to be happy to keep Horace and she basically just she's just like it's dead boom she goes to the principal's office it's dead and throws a dead plant with a in a planter on her desk. And obviously she goes to detention and she asks Pony, she's like, Oh, how's Horace? Oh, uh, who's Horace? And he's just freaking playing with a yo yo. He smacks him in the face, he's like, Oh man. Good old <laughs> classic I guess you could say Butch Hartman or, or Nickelodeon style joke talents. It's like, ah, uh, you know, 
You gave the you gave the little idea. You gave them the little idea of like, man, uh, yeah, I'll do this one. Do you a solid on this one, Pony? I'll take the L for you this time. But it's just like, uh, damn, you took the L for no reason, Annie. So <laughs> it's basically like I said, teaching kids a bad lesson. Like, hey, look out for yourself. You know, because you never know, man. You could get the whole Annie and Pony situation where it's not going to go in your favor and Pony's going to forget about Horace. So it teaches – that's teaching kids like a freaking bad lesson right there. But, you know, it's all in fun. Good comedic episode as a whole, which I definitely enjoy. So long story short, well, I guess it was a pretty long story. I'll give my rating – as a I'll, I'll go along with you 6.5 it's nothing super spectacular um as of right now i can honestly say this has to be one of my favorite episodes i've seen of it's pony so far one of the best episodes i reviewed so with all that being said i'm the cartoon kid ray rollins and he's alex payne we both give this episode of it's pony horace a 6.5 out of 10. This is the Cartoon Kid channel where we talk cartoons and we do a daily, baby. And as always, toss your opinions down in the comments box below. Tell us if you like this episode. Tell us if you hate it. And tell us what you would rate it. Until then, we will see you when we see you. Peace out, everybody.